Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. This device is literally the one device I've been waiting for ever since the 8th Gen 1 was announced in December of 2021. This embodies the best that that Sony has to offer every year. The One series always gives us the higher refresh rate, the larger display, the better camera stack. Uh, but not only that, it also gives us that time of flight sensor on the back. There is a lot of changes under the hood that Sony made based on feedback they got from their, basically from people like you, fans of the Sony Xperia line. We're talking a better experience on the camera on the front, a better experience on the cameras on the back. We also have a bigger battery. We also have a better sounding stereo speakers. We have an SD card support, a headphone jack, a whole bunch of different things that you typically don't expect to see on a flagship in 2022. This is TK and this is everything you need to know about the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have in front of us literally all of the Xperia 1s. The Xperia 1, Mark 1, 2, 3, and then 4. Obviously we'll see the aesthetical differences that they've gone through from having a glossy reflective back all the way up to having the smoky back, sticking with it this year. And again, you could definitely see that last year's and this year's, they look similar, but I will assure you that there are some physical differences between the two. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind, of course, is Sony always makes amazingly, amazingly well looking, uh, well, good looking devices. Okay, so first and foremost, we're gonna talk about the design. Definitely one thing that will strike you is the fact that the device kind of looks very similar to the way that looks like right here. But one thing you'll first notice is obviously is that the camera placement on the top here is on the top left is slightly wider on the Xperia 1 Mark III and the 4 definitely a little bit to the left. Also one of the biggest differences that we have in here is that we also have a bigger battery and that actually attributed to a slightly thicker device. And what I mean by this is when we put the devices close to each other like this you can definitely see that the 1 Mark IV is definitely a little bit thicker. It does attribute to a slightly heavier weight but not enough for it to make a big difference. Realistically if you're used to the 1 Mark III the 1 Mark IV is going to be absolutely fantastic. The biggest difference here obviously is we went from the 4500 milliampere battery to the 5000 milliampere battery. Still supported with a 30 watt charger. One thing I will mention though, in the box, the 30 watt charger is not included anymore. So Sony is moving on with the uh, basically reducing uh, usage or reducing carbon footprint. And one of the biggest things obviously is, uh, you know, starting to use all recyclable boxes. And of course, now we're no longer including the charger. It's a 30 watt charger. So if you have a PV charger, it's gonna work perfectly. Uh, and of course, uh, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, and of course, uh, we still have the new camera stack here. Uh, still a primary 12 megapixel, uh, 24 uh, basically millimeter equivalent uh, lens, a 16 megapixel uh, ultra wide. We have the 3D time of flight sensor here with Zeiss, and of course, we have the new telephoto lens that goes to 85 and 125 as opposed to what we had here, which was the 70 and 105, giving us a little bit more reach but also a little bit more flexibility between all of the cameras that we have in here. The last thing I will say though is that we are now able to shoot 4K. 120 frames per second from all of the lenses on this device and this is a little bit different than what we had last year we only had it on the main sensor the 24 mega uh, millimeter sensor that we had in there so ois auto, um, uh, basically um, auto focusing works on everything except for the ultra wide we only have auto focusing um, and as far as the overall experience that we have in here we have better hdr processing and of course iaf on all of the lenses so faster readout we can also shoot multi-frame 20 frames per second from any single one of these lenses again They've expanded the functionalities that we typically normally get from the main sensor on any flagship on the market, and that's one of the biggest differences. Now, if we turn it on the side here, one of the big things you'll notice is overall we are missing a button, but we still have the same placement for the fingerprint sensor. You'll notice here that the button is slightly different in shape. Uh, now, the assistant button that we had in here is no longer there, and I'll explain to you why we lost it, but we obviously still have the initiation or the camera button with the half press for focusing that's present here on the bottom right. So overall, when you want to be able to take a, a picture, you don't have to unlock your phone, press and hold, launches into the camera pro app and whatever mode that you were on before, and you'll be able to use it. Uh, I will say though, one thing to keep in mind, the hardware that I have with me right now is technically prototype or pre-release hardware. So neither the software or the hardware is final, although I'm pretty sure the hardware looks pretty much this way. It's just that the software hasn't been finalized. And this is one of the things that, one of the reasons why I will mention this is I'm actually not able to get 5G currently, although this will support 5G sub six and millimeter wave um, on the market uh, once it's available publicly. Now, when we look on the left side, we'll notice that the SIM tray or the tray for the SIM card and the memory card has been moved and it actually actually present all the way on the 
bottom, a little bit more um, comparable to what we saw on the Xperia 1 Pro or on the Xperia Pro I. And we'll start talking also a little bit more about what they brought over from the Xperia Pro I. And that pretty much means that we still have the ability of using the uh, you know toolless removal here. You can actually put in an SD card as well as a uh, your SIM card in here, and it actually now is flush to the bottom. The bottom firing speaker and the top firing speaker on the front facing side of the display still give us a much more uh, fuller, better, uh, lower frequencies as well as stereo speakers and definitely sound a lot better than what we saw with the Xperia 1 Mark III, which already sounded great to, uh, to begin with. We still have that 6.5 inch 4K 120 frames per second refresh rate display and it is obviously an AMOLED display. Uh, the camera on the front actually has been upgraded and now we have a 12 megapixel camera sensor similar to the ones that we have in the back and we can actually shoot 4K 30 frames per second on the front facing camera. One thing to also mention, which was definitely very exciting for me, is Video Pro now also supports the front facing camera to be able to record video from it straight. So you can definitely see right there we're using the front facing camera. And of course, all of that experience translates into the usability of what we get with this device. So a lot of flexibility done here. So better front facing camera, bigger battery, better sensors on the back. All of this is still attributing to a much better experience overall uh, from what we've seen before. Lastly, on the top, we still have the DSEE supported top uh, headphone jack that's built in here with the uh, obviously the DAC built into the system, one of the microphones, and last but not least, again, the same camera stack that we talked about before, 16, 24, 85, and 125. Now the Xperia 1 Mark IV obviously will be released with Android 12 out of the box, so did not necessarily need to wait for the software update. Uh, the software itself comes pretty standard. There's a few updates that are going to be coming up. Um, not all of the features that Sony announced today, unfortunately, are present on the phone, namely uh, the Music Pro application, although will be available at, at launch, so the retail units will definitely have it. My pre-production unit, unfortunately, does not have it. So what I'm going to do, share you guys is real quick, a quick example of what these features are going to be. Oh. The biggest thing about the Music Pro app is utilizing the functionality of the microphones built into this device, but also utilizing cloud processing for optimizing uh, audio experiences, uh, basically for musicians. But for me, the way I look at it, also for content creators, for providing us the ability of having great voiceover content uh, or creation, creating voiceover content from a mobile device. And the way it does essentially is, it, regardless of where you are, it, recording audio on the device, uploading it to the cloud, and it will filter the audio performance back down to you with a really clean studio quality audio experience. Uh, I will definitely get a chance to check that out, hopefully in a future uh, update, but at this point, unfortunately, I don't have that. Uh, and again, Music Pro is about the only thing that we don't have access to at this point. Now, the last thing I didn't get a chance to mention to you guys, as well as the fact that we have the HN1, is the fact that we now have one storage configuration, and that is 512 gigabytes of storage. So there's no more 128, 256, or the earlier generations that we've seen. Uh, and we go straight to the 12 gigs of RAM, 2, uh, 512 gigs of internal storage, still supported with an SD card. So not only do you get the largest capacity available on most devices on the market, but we still have the ability of expanding that as well. So overall, that's kind of a general understanding of what the specifications are, but we still have some features that are not mentioned yet. Namely, the fact that we can actually now use a technically uh, a feature that was only available on the Xperia Pro I. And this is the Xperia Pro I. And one of the big benefits that I loved about this device is the ability of being able to use it with this little accessory. This is a rear display. It's a magnetic display mounted here, but you can obviously just use it with the clamp. And this display allowed me to use the Xperia Pro I's main sensor and of course shoot with it and see actually what's going on in front of it. And that was the biggest benefit. So one thing to mention is that the Xperia 1 Mark III does not work with this. I have tested it multiple times. So here is the reason why we do not have that button in the middle. The button that we have in the middle here that used to be for the assistant reduces the amount of space where the clamp here for the display can actually fit and we're able to use the device correctly. So. This is, if you've used this before, you know exactly how it is. It mounts in here and you'll notice it goes perfectly. Let's go ahead and let it focus. It goes perfectly between these two buttons and we still have a cold shoe that's built in here. Plug in the USB-C connector on the back and now gets us access to be able to use it in multiple modes. So I can either use it directly in Camera Pro. So Camera Pro now uses it. You'll notice right there, it's using the main sensors on the back and we are able to switch between the cameras again. The 16, 24, 85, or 128. And of course, we, can, we still have the ability of kind of zooming between all of them. The other thing that I really like about this is the ability of using it with Video Pro. Video Pro does the exact same configuration, but now we have the ability of using Video Pro on the front facing camera. And what I mean by this, so now you'll notice right there, it's actually using the front camera under the, under the device. We're not just using it with the main sensor over here. We still see the measurement here as far as the audio levels, uh, standby, and of course, battery percentage. Of course, I'm still able to switch it over. And now we are also able to use it with the main sensors 
on the back and sorry about the exposure it just we have uh, bright lights in the studio right now so this is something that is definitely very unique and they brought over from the xperia pro i and i think that's one of the main benefits that i love about the fact that yes even though we technically lost the button we technically gained a much bigger experience and usability case for vloggers and we're definitely going to take a look at some of those examples as i'm showing you guys right now uh utilizing some of those functionalities and the ability of enjoying uh, you know basically functional uh, options for not only using the main sensors on the back but also a sensor on the front if you'd like to use it jumping into the camera application we have a pretty much same experience that we've had before now the basic mode covers most of the standard functionalities of your standard camera app on most of your devices so what i mean by this is we're able to use all of the lenses we're also able to use video on this so i can switch over to the video and i can still use all of the lenses i can record at 4k so we can go into the menu and i can choose uh, basically 4k resolution and of course, I'm able to do uh, you know, stabilization and so on. One thing to mention though, that basic mode only records at 4K 30 frames per second. So to get the best functionality out of the lenses, we wanna be able to use the main sensor uh, or use Video Pro. But the reason why I wanted to stay in the basic mode because I wanted to show you guys now that basic mode, uh, although is basically the, the standard option, we now have 4K recording on the front facing sensor VR because we are using a 12 megapixel sensor on the front. So video recording on the front is going to look really, really nice. And of course, for the best experience, my recommendation is to jump into auto mode uh, or essentially the professional version of this. So you have uh, shutter priority, uh, manual, and of course, MR. You can configure all the different options that you want. And of course, uh, configure it and then be able to go out and shoot content at your liking. The main thing I will probably say is keep in mind that whenever you set up the system, anytime you press the power, that little camera shutter button on the right, it automatically opens up the camera pro to whatever the last version of the system that you're using. So you can do continuous, you can change continuous high, HDR high, uh, three second HDR low mode. And of course, I wanna, I'll be able to show you guys obviously the, you know, the tracking that we can do with all of the lenses on the back. IAF is actually present with OIS um, on the main sensor, the telephoto lenses, and of course, um, autofocusing on the ultra right as well. Now, Cinema Pro is still present in this device, but I will be very honest with you guys. With the new improvements that we have with the Video Pro application, I have had very little need to jump into Cinema Pro. Now, there is still a functional, a functional element there that you probably will want to be able to use, especially if you're trying to use more of a cinematic project-based situation. But for me, I find that everything I need is present in this interface. So we have uh, obviously the ability of using front-facing camera, back-facing camera, Camera. We have the, uh, the mode, the frame rate, the HDR, and how much basically time I have left, Video Pro, uh, percentage on the battery, and of course, the configuration that we have in there. I also have the ability of jumping between all of the lenses. So let me show you one thing, something that's really, really cool. So here, it's 120 frames per second is standard. I can use it from any lens, but I can go ahead and switch over from the 24 to the 16. I'll give it a second. And you can see 120 frames per second is still there. Let's go back in here. We'll jump over from the 16 to the 80 and 125. And surprise, surprise, uh, one more time, sorry. 120 frames per second is still present there. Now, stabilization is only available on 4K 30 frames per second, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, we also uh, we now have the ability of jumping in to higher uh, dynamic range uh, options. So you notice you have wide and standard dynamic range, which we before only had the standard. And of course, the ability of jumping between the BT2020 as far as the codec, or stick into SDR if you want to be able to like, stay the BT709, that's the older generation. Just make sure that whatever system you're using is compatible with it. So for me, I love obviously using all of the different lenses. We also have seamless zoom that works between all of the lenses as well. But uh, one thing to mention, this only works at 4K 30 frames per second, it does not work at a higher refresh rate. So what that means is I'm actually able to zoom in and out between all the different lenses and kind of just basically go from the 16. Let's go ahead and bring this down all the way and then we're going to just go jump over keep zooming 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 so the last thing i'm going to talk to you guys before we get out of here and start talking about experiences and of course shooting content from this uh, i actually want to mention to you guys that now we support live streaming so live streaming is going to be a big change in here and what this device can do we not only we have live streaming here but we're also going to talk about that a little bit when we get into the gaming but we can actually do an instant live streaming experience straight from the video pro and we can go directly under the settings and go ahead and just say create a new event i'll set it up and then from there easy easily create and live stream straight to YouTube or any SMP uh, configurable uh, IP. Uh, basically, if you have your configuration for your own server, you'll be able to basically customize it. But right now, out of the box, it supports YouTube easily. So I can basically, within two button clicks, name my title, hit save, and then go live. Or of course, I can set my configuration here, go live, unlisted, public. And of course, we have normal latency and low latency. And we actually support even an ultra low latency when it comes down to gaming. As you know, that matters the most. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do a quick sample of the front facing and the back facing cameras on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. So this is going to be a good example of what the front facing camera can do now on the brand new Xperia 1 Mark IV. 
We have 4K on the front facing camera, an upgraded camera experience that we didn't have before. Many people have cons been concerned about the fact that we can only shoot 1080p. Uh, you know, the main sensors on the back obviously gonna be the best. Well, they brought one of the sensors from the back all the way to the front. And this should be a pretty good example of what the audio and video looks like from the front facing camera. Now we're using the main sensor on the back. And again, we're shooting in 4K 30 because I'm still using the basic app or essentially the default camera application that is typical to what you normally see with other smartphones. Now, it doesn't mean that I can't switch over to Video Pro and I can then shoot over to 4K 60, 4K 120. And again, the capabilities of using 4K 120 on all of the lenses is a big improvement over last year. Most smartphones on the market always focus on the main sensor and give you most of the capabilities there. Sony is giving it to us on all of the lenses. Now, obviously, uh, burst shot, uh, eye tracking, all of those is all of those features are there, and also much faster readout from the sensors. One of the biggest reasons of actually staying with this size of a sensor on this device is the ability of improving the speed and the processing power on this and of course leveraging the HN1. As you saw there, video is absolutely one of the biggest, strongest suit here as what we have in this device. Now I do want to talk a little bit about the settings here before we jump into the audio experience. The toggles obviously are all Android 12, you've seen them before, but one of the really nice options that we have in here is the ability of switching between standard mode and uh, obviously the ability of using creator mode straight from the menu here. So I don't have to actually swipe down, go into settings and jump down and try to find it. It's actually pretty straightforward. From the main menu in here, we can go in there and I can see I'm running creator mode right now. I'll go ahead and click it, go into the settings tab and I'm gonna be able to switch it over to standard mode with auto creator mode turned on for different applications. So Netflix, Photography Pro, Photos and Video Pro are all supported in here. So everything very nicely configured and easily uh, used. But when we go into the settings tab, we'll notice that we obviously have all the tabs, we can customize them, get into the settings tab and of course the power menu. Uh, overall, everything is pretty much state forward, but what we've seen before with Android 12, uh, it's not running um, all of Material U or what Google released, but it definitely runs everything as close possible to stock Android experience, and that's typical to what we see from Sony. So we can customize, obviously, the display. Uh, again, 120 frames per second is what we get in here. The battery is a 5,000 milliampere battery, uh, and of course, we have the ability of customizing the, uh, the color, the brightness, and even the white balance. So you can customize the white balance options in here. You can turn that on, go into the cool experience, or you can even go to high refresh rate, customize, turn that on, and now it turns on the 100, 120 frames per second. Keep in mind that that will consume a little bit more battery, but we definitely have a bigger battery now, so hopefully that averages out. Image quality, we can go in there and customize it again and just pick the one that works best for us. As far as the audio, we still have Dolby Atmos. Uh, we still have the ability of using dynamic uh, audio for 360, but we also have the 360 up mix. And uh, now that unfortunately will need to disable the DSCE op uh, option here, Ultimate, but if you do turn that on, it disables it by itself. Uh, effects priority and of course, intelligent wind filter. This is for video if you're recording it out there. So it's definitely look really, really nice. But let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and play our favorite song. This is Alex Crindo, Jumbo by NCS Release. Volume is at 100%. Let's go check it out. Check it out. So one thing I will say, the audio definitely sounds better than what we have on the Xperia 1 Mark III. And what I mean by this, not louder, better. This is something that they've improved overall in the stereo speakers. The top grille is ever so slightly bigger than what we had from the Xperia 1 Mark III. The bottom one matches the sound, but we definitely have better representation on the low frequencies. So it definitely sounds better on the mids and lows. And of course, overall, the sound is pretty much the same. You're getting the full front experience, uh, stereo experience running on the Xperia 1 Mark IV, and you're getting better audio. And of course, last but not least, for better, the best audio that you're gonna get on this device is obviously gonna be with the headphone jack, as that is gonna give you uh, the lowest latency and best performance audio. We have, of course, a new stack of wallpapers uh, that come in here. We have the standard one, the black one, we have the purple one, and we also have the white one. So you'll get those customizations and you're able to put those directly onto your device. So we've covered the display, we've covered all the new features, the cameras, and of course, we've covered about live streaming and some of the other functionalities that we have. Let's talk about gaming. Now, as far as the game enhancer, it's pretty much the same experience that we've seen before. You swipe down from the top left. Uh, you have the ability of customizing or either having it a menu as a pop-up or as a floating icon. Uh, for streaming purposes, you do need to convert that over to a pull-down, and it mentions that to you, of course. Uh, of course, shutter button configuration, you can change different options in here. You can change the shutter button default option to basically open and close game enhancer, optimize, and of course, change the different settings. We don't have to modify those. Uh, we have quick access, multi-screen, uh, you know, multi-screenshots, uh, uh, video recording. This is by a single click will automatically start recording for us. You'll notice, boom, we get that little icon. And of course, 
Uh, if uh, one, we'll give it a second. Let's go through all of the splash screens because they're going to pop up in front of us with everything. I think one more. Uh, one thing to mention though, once I do a one swipe, you'll notice that it's present there. And if I want to stop it, pretty much the same experience. You stop it there, saves the clip. You're able to access it later. Uh, and of course, uh, you can still access everything else. Mode, we still have the ability of customizing the experience here. I have it on custom. Uh, high touch response rate, maximum refresh rate of 120. And of course, touch uh, sorry, touch tracking to medium, but you can customize it to your own prefer personal preference. HS power control still present here. Optimized touch area, of course, we talked about that. And you can change between performance, balance, and battery life prefer uh, preferred depending on your experience. HS power control is one of the best features that we have on the market. And the reason behind that is it allows us to use an external power source to run the device using that power without running heat generating battery functions, meaning the battery doesn't get charged or trickle charges it at a very low minimum rate, not enough for it to generate heat. So it reduces the amount of heat, but also extends the life of the battery on the device. So we don't have to run very hot all the time. Uh, so that's overall most of the configuration there under display and sound you can go in there again customize uh basically the image quality standard we can go to audio, audio equalizer if you want to be able to conf configure that and of course if you have an audio uh audio input with boom mic or inline mic you can definitely customize them multitasking straightforward to what we've had before youtube web and apps we're able to basically do searches screenshots but this is the magical menu option first we have the RT record, and this is basically in case you love or you, you want to be able to make sure, make sure to capture every single um, you know shot or every single action thing that you do in the game. Turning this on automatically does an auto backup of 30 seconds of playback. So if you've, if you've had a great game and you remember that you just got there, you can go ahead and hit the record. It'll record the last 60, 30 seconds and it'll move forward with the recording for it. Um, orientation of uh, recording files, obviously you can customize that. Recording quality, uh, you can set it to be either 1080p, 720, or 480. Obviously you can customize it. And you can also turn on the front facing camera if you'd like. So this is something that you can customize microphone and all. We have the ability of using casting or ca capture card. This is if you're using an external capture card function. Last but not least is the, cons well, the streaming. So one thing I will say, this is absolutely easy. Once you configure your account, you'll notice right there, my account, it has a preset title. You can customize it. And here, as I mentioned, we have ultra low latency. This is going to reduce the latency between when you start hitting record and you're uplo uh, uploading. 1080p 60 is the best resolution that it's going to be supporting. And I feel like this is the best one that we're also able to do consistently across any network, be it 5G sub six or even millimeter wave. And of course, from there on, you can customize your, uh, your privacy screen, uh, stream mic, and of course, volume level. You can also even customize uh, basically the layout. So I'll take a screenshot right there and it'll give us a few options in there. Let's say we'll say we'll, we'll pick this one. So we'll go ahead next. I can change the color on this one, say orange or blue at this point, change the name here, and of course, start live streaming. And of course, all of this is very easily done and super, super nice to be able to do, uh, of course, directly either from the camera, from the video pro camera application, or straight up here from the game enhancer that we have in here. Now, let's jump in and do a quick sample of the uh, gaming experience on the brand new Xperia 1 Mark IV. Dog is in Lost Enemy contact! He's back up! Capturing Alpha! Tango down! Contact with enemy! We captured Alpha. Get up to you. Tango down! Ready for The gaming experience on the One Mark IV is as good as we've seen it in the past. The reason I say this is because the 4K 120 frames per second and of course the stereo speakers, the experience that we get there is very much a very similar experience. The 888 and the 8 Gen 1 performance wise, I don't feel like there's a big difference to basically call one better than the other. It just depends on what you're trying to do. From a gaming experience, of course, playing a Call of Duty Mobile at 90 frames per second, there's just nothing like it. And it still resides to be something that you can only do on an Xperia. So if you like that game and you love having that experience, I still feel like the Xperia 1 series is definitely going to be the best option for you. 
Now, PUBG Mobile does the exact same thing. The experience is super nice, buttery smooth, and very, very nice. And I think overall, not a question, I mean, there's no question here that this is gonna be a great gaming device. HS power control, video, uh, you know, live streaming straight directly from the app is very, very nice. And one thing to mention that the Xperia Pro I and the Xperia Pro will be receiving the live streaming functionality as well in a future update. So currently they don't have that, but that feature will be coming over to the Pro I and the Pro. No word yet if the Xperia 1 Mark III will receive it, but again, we'll see how that goes in the future. So let's talk quality of image and what we're able to do here. Sony really took all of the comments that we've seen in the past of, you know, we need bigger sensors, we need better sensors. And they really looked at that and saw basically, what are you trying to do? What is the experience you're trying to do with a device? The Xperia 1 Mark III was definitely a very good phone, but one thing could be said is the best features were, was, were basically focused on the main sensor. If you wanna have the flexibility of using all of the sensors on the back of the device with all of the functionalities, I'm talking, 4K 120, I'm talking about eye tracking and, and uh, basically uh, object tracking, all of those things working on all the 16, the 24, the 20, the 85 and the 125. The Pro, uh, well, the One Mark IV is definitely taking it a step forward and they're learning a lot from what the Pro I did for us, namely the experience or the ability of using the external display. And I think this is one of the biggest thing I wanted to see work on the One Mark III last year when the Pro I was released. I tested it out, trust me, I tried it multiple times with different units. The Pro I is the only device of 2021 that supported an external display and now the Xperia One Mark IV definitely has that. So. Camera experience, as you're seeing already there, there's a lot of really good functional things. And of course, uh, the ability of being able to shoot 20 frames per second with autofocusing on IAF was absolutely a blessing. Um, as we see here, we had uh, one of our models here, uh, my, my buddy and I, Juan Carlos, uh, we were working with Clark and she absolutely, it was, it was literally the best experience you could do. Eye tracking on, uh, on the actual, uh, well, on her face, and of course, having her walk all around. Every single shot out of those burst shots that I'm showing you guys were absolutely 100% in focus and perfect. I also used it at the theme park and it works absolutely the same. And this is one of the things I really appreciate. We not only do we have high burst mode, but we also have HDR high burst mode. So they've added HDR across the entire system. So which is one of the benefits that I, that I like. And we also have not only just standard HDR, but we also have a higher wider uh, range in there. So picture quality absolutely looks great. Um, you know, low light photography, subject photography, eye tracking, front facing 4K video stabilized is also definitely very nice. And of course, all of these experiences are culminized into a device. So at this point, what I probably will say is this, is this device worth an upgrade from let's say the Xperia 1 Mark III? It depends on what you're looking for because there's a lot of things in here that are kind of very much in the same. I feel like if, an example, if you need an external display, that would be a definite win there. If you want to be able to use 4K 120 on all of the lenses, definitely going to be there. So if you want that extra functionality, I feel like the One Mark IV brings it in there and it provides you that experience, of course, uh, all across the lenses that we have in here. The front facing camera is definitely much better. So if you do rely on that on and you wanted a better experience on the One Mark III, well, this one's the One Mark IV, um, obviously, yeah, the Xperia One Mark IV brings that in there. So. It depends on what you're looking for and it depends what you want to what you want to do with your device. Regardless of which flagship device that you look for on the market right now, 512 gigs of internal storage with expandable SD card option almost doesn't exist. So I still think the Xperia line is definitely where it's at. So I want to say thank you very much first and foremost to Sony for allowing me to check out this early prototype hardware Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. I'm hoping to spend more time with it once it becomes more retail to be able to also test out the Music Pro application. For me, that's the application that kind of focuses on what I like to do. Content creation and voiceover or quality audio on the go is a big factor for us. One of the biggest reasons why I like using, let's say here, the Rode wire, wire, wireless microphones, or I actually look for smartphones that have really good audio. The Music Pro is really something that we're able to use to provide a studio grade audio without having to be in the studio. We could be anywhere and process it. It is based on the cloud based uh, functionalities where it basically uploads, processes and downloads. And hopefully we'll be able to test that out and share with you guys my opinions on that a little bit more in person. So I hope that you found this video helpful and you are as excited as I am of the brand new Xperia 1 Mark IV. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. I'll see you in the next video.